The 1919 United States anarchist bombings were a series of bombings and attempted bombings carried out by the Italian anarchist followers of Luigi Galliani from April through June 1919. These bombings led to the Red Scare of 1919–1920. April mail bomb attacks In late April 1919, at least 36 booby trap dynamite filled bombs were mailed to a cross section of prominent politicians and appointees, including the Attorney General as well as justice officials, newspaper editors, and businessmen, including John D. Rockefeller. Among all the bombs addressed to high level officials, one bomb was addressed to the home of a Department of Justice Bureau of Investigation boy field agent once tasked with investigating the Galleonists, Rame Weston Finch, who in 1918 had arrested two prominent Galleonists while leading a police raid on the offices of their publication Kronaka Sovversiva. The mail bombs were wrapped in brown paper with similar address and advertising labels. Inside, wrapped in bright green paper and stamped, Gimbal Brothers Novelty Samples was a cardboard box containing a 6-inch by 3-inch block of hollowed wood about 1 inch in thickness, packed with a stick of dynamite. A small vial of sulfuric acid was fastened to the wood block, along with three fulminate of mercury blasting caps. Opening one end of the box, the end marked, open, released a coil spring that caused the acid to drip from its vial onto the blasting caps, the acid ate through the caps, igniting them and detonating the dynamite. The galleonists intended their bombs to be delivered on May Day. Since 1890 and the Second International, May 1 had been celebrated as the International Day of Communist, Anarchist and Socialist Revolutionary Solidarity. Seattle Mayor Ole Hansen, who had recently attained national prominence for opposing a general strike in Seattle, received one of the mailed package bombs, but it was opened by William Langer, a member of his office staff. Langer opened the wrong end of the box and the bottle of acid dropped onto a table without detonation. He took the bomb to the local police, who notified the post office and other police agencies. On April 29, Georgia Senator Thomas W. Hardwick, who had co-sponsored the Anti-Radical Immigration Act of 1918, received a similarly disguised bomb. It blew off the hands of his housekeeper when she attempted to open the package. The senator's wife was also injured in the blast which severely burned her face and neck and a piece of shrapnel cut her lip and loosened several of her teeth. News reports of the Hardwick bomb described its distinctive packaging and an alert post office employee in New York connected this to 16 similar packages which he had set aside a few days earlier for insufficient postage. Another 12 bombs were eventually recovered before reaching their intended targets. The addressees were the following. Topic. June bombings On the evening of June 2, 1919, the Galleonists managed to detonate eight large bombs nearly simultaneously in eight cities. These bombs were much larger than those sent in April, using up to 25 pounds 11 kilograms of dynamite and all were wrapped or packaged with heavy metal slugs designed to act as shrapnel. Addressees included government officials who had endorsed anti-sedition laws and deportation of immigrants suspected of crimes or associated with illegal movements as well as judges who had sentenced anarchists to prison. The homes of Mayor of Cleveland Harry L. Davis, Pittsburgh's federal judge W. H. S. Thompson, Immigration Chief W. W. Sibre, Massachusetts State Representative Leland Powers, Judge Charles C. Knott of New York, and Attorney General A. Mitchell Palmer, already the recipient of a mail bomb in April, were attacked in the new wave of violence. None of the targeted men were killed, but one bomb took the life of New York City night watchman William Boehner and the bomb intended for Attorney General Palmer's home prematurely exploded and killed Carlo Valdinosi, who was a former editor of the Galleonist publication Kronaka Soversiva and close associate of Galliani. Though not seriously injured, Palmer and his family were shaken by the blast and the house itself was largely demolished. Two near casualties of the same bomb were Assistant Secretary of the Navy Franklin Delano Roosevelt and his wife Eleanor, then living across the street from Palmer. They had walked past the house just minutes before the explosion and their residence was close enough that one of the bomber's body parts landed on their doorstep. Each of the bombs was delivered with several copies of a pink flyer, titled Plain Words, that read as such, War, Class War, and you were the first to wage it under the cover of the powerful institutions you call order, in the darkness of your laws. 
there will have to be bloodshed, we will not dodge, there will have to be murder, we will kill, because it is necessary, there will have to be destruction, we will destroy to rid the world of your tyrannical institutions. The flyer was later traced to a printing shop operated by two anarchists, namely typesetter Andrea Salcedo and compositor Roberto Elia, who were both galleonists according to the later memoirs of other members. Salcedo committed suicide and Elia refused an offer to cancel deportation proceedings if he would testify about his role in the galleonist organization. Unable to secure enough evidence for criminal trials, authorities continued to use the Anarchist Exclusion Act and related statutes to deport known galleonists. Topic response Fueled by labor unrest and the anarchist bombings and then spurred on by Attorney General A. Mitchell Palmer's attempt to suppress radical and non-radical labor organizations, it was characterized by exaggerated rhetoric, illegal search and seizures, unwarranted arrests and detentions and the deportation of several hundred suspected radicals and anarchists. Palmer, twice targeted by anarchist bombs, organized the nationwide series of police actions known as the Palmer Raids in November 1919 and January 1920. Under suspicion of violating the Espionage Act, the Sedition Act and or the Immigration Act of 1918, approximately 10,000 people were arrested, of which 3,500 were held in detention. Of those held in detention, 556 resident aliens were eventually deported. Topic media and popular culture The bombings were dramatized in the 2012 film No God, No Master. The bombing of the home of Palmer was also dramatized in the 2011 film J. Edgar. Topic see also 1914 Lexington Avenue Explosion 1916 Preparedness Day Bombing 1917 Milwaukee Police Department Bombing Espionage Act of 1917-1919-1920 Palmer Raids 1920 Wall Street Bombing 1970 San Francisco Police Department Park, Station Bombing 1970 Greenwich Village Townhouse Explosion Anarchism and Violence Propaganda of the Deed Ted Kaczynski, anarcho-primitivist called the Unabomber involved involved in a series of similar bombings. Topic notes Topic References Allen, F. L., Only Yesterday, An Informal History of the 1920s. New York, Harper & Sons 1957. Average, Paul Professor, Sacco and Vanzetti, The Anarchist Background, Princeton, N.J., Princeton University Press 1991, ISBN 0-691-02604-1. Average, Paul, Professor, Anarchist Voices, An Oral History of Anarchism in America, Princeton, Princeton University Press, 1996. McCormick, Charles H. Hopeless Cases, The Hunt for the Red Scare Terrorist Bombers, University Press of America, 2005, ISBN 0-7618-3133-9, ISBN 978-0-7618-3133-4. Neville, J. F., 20th Century Cause Celebre, Sacco, Vanzetti, and the Press, 1920-1927. Westport, Kahn, Prager 2004. Post, Louis F., The Deportation's Delirium of 1920, A Personal Narrative of an Historic Official Experience NY, 1923, reissued, ISBN 0-306-71882-0, ISBN 1-4102-0553-3.